What's up, beautiful people? Let's face it, most slideshow presentations are the B word. They're boring, they're bland, they're basic, they're boo-boo. And in this video, I'm going to try to give you some quick tips so that your presentations can really stand out. And the first tip is don't be a template. You know, whether or not you're using Google Slides, PowerPoint, Keynote, you need to get out of your mind that you are creating a slideshow presentation. Nah, you are creating some next level artistic learning experiences. So whatever software you're using, I want you to go ahead and take the little template stuff and just delete it and just pretty much ignore these themes. All that cookie cutter stuff they give you, your audience has seen it before. You don't want your presentation looking like everybody else's. You are unique. Another reason to delete all this template stuff is it often causes you not to use your space effectively. The slide is your canvas. Remember, you don't have to buy slides, so use your space and use as many slides as you need to deliver your information. Now you might be wondering, why is this picture of the Mona Lisa painting here? So I am no art expert, but apparently a lot of people like this painting. But imagine though, if it looks something like this. It'd be really weird if the dude from the Ninja Turtles, Leonardo da Vinci, gave us a painting that looked like this. It's just not aesthetically pleasing. Or take this pretty epic movie poster that came out the year I was born. So much awesomeness here. But imagine if the canvas looks something like this. By no means nowhere as cool at all. So use your space on your slides effectively. Now, if we're talking a presentation, you know, this might be a typical presentation you would come across. This is a presentation about European colonization. Nothing terribly wrong with it, but there's nothing really exciting about it. Or even worse, you may see something like this. The picture all out of proportion. Please don't do that. Text all small, zero creativity. I want you to aim for something like this. This slide makes effective use of space, gets creative with the coloring and the fonts, more on that a little bit later, and is more likely to capture your audience's attention. Now, before you are even ready to do the creative part, you need to know what you are teaching or sharing. This step means you have to be organized. And I think it's really important to use your speaker notes. So as I do my research or come across information I want to share with the audience, I start to organize it by slide in the speaker notes. Let me give you an example. I'm working on that European colonization of North America presentation, and I don't know a whole lot about the French you know, colonization of North America. So as I'm gathering information from books, from the internet, I'm starting to type that stuff in the slide notes. Now this is a lot of stuff, and I don't really know what I'm gonna do with it, but I came across this photo of one of the early French explorers. I came across a map that I think maybe would be useful. And what I'm doing is, as I'm gathering this information, I'm gonna then maybe divide this up into multiple slides. So maybe I wanna introduce Jacques coming into North America. Maybe I wanna then show a map of what he was really trying to get to. So you wanna break it up across multiple slides. Make sure you cite any images where you got them so you can make sure they're the correct image. You don't wanna show your audience something that is not actually what you're saying it is. My next tip is, Build your learning experience. Most presentations are static. Somebody talking over one slide forever with no life, no energy, kind of like I'm doing right now. Your job as the creator and presenter is to break the information down for your audience. Think of yourself as mama or papa bird bringing back the information in an easily digestible form to your audience. A typical decent PowerPoint will look something like this. There's nothing horrible about it, but more than likely while you are talking, your audience is reading your slide before you get to the information and they are probably also having a difficult time knowing what to focus on. Do I look at the horses? Why am I looking at the horses? What's up with the arrows on the map? I can't really see either of the images. I'm hungry, mmm, donuts, this is no bueno. Like I said, you want to break your info down. So something like this is way more effective, in my experience, at keeping your audience engaged. So this same information, perhaps I first introduce Columbus, then I maybe tease out that, you know, the European explorers who came didn't really know what they had quote unquote discovered. But ultimately, one thing they did know is that this began this process known as the Columbian Exchange. I show the map once again that was on the first slide, but now I spend some time. I give the audience a definition and as they can see it, I then further explain it. 
you know, after I explain the Columbian Exchange and give a couple of examples, maybe I dive deep into one in particular, you know, show an image of the Great Plains, you know, this image of the bison, and then this idea of Native American life and how it was impacted in many different ways by the arrival of Europeans. You know, get the audience to think about what are you seeing right here? The typical image of the Great Plains nomadic, semi-nomadic lifestyle, the horse. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen, the horse did not exist in North America or in the Western Hemisphere for that matter until the arrival of various Europeans. So what I'm doing or trying to do is to slowly break down the information in a way that allows the audience to follow the story and really kind of make purposeful decisions about what I put on each slide. Now, if I was really doing this presentation, I would, you know, talk about it a lot more. I would explain things, but hopefully you get the point. You need to build or break down your learning experience. Next tip, use of color and fonts. Each idea or part of your presentation should have a theme, a certain vibe that your audience can easily follow. And that's another reason why you want to ignore this template crap. But this is also where your use of colors and fonts can come into play. Now, we're not trying to be that cool kid at school with the swag drip or whatever slang term we are using nowadays. You know, the dude with the matching colors on the shoes, the hat, the backpack, the shirt collar. We don't need to be that guy. But keep in mind, your use of colors and fonts matter. It is super annoying when somebody uses a slide you can't read or is difficult to read or something that looks like someone threw up on it. So you want to be purposeful in the colors you use. Now, luckily, there are all sorts of dope tools to help those of us who are color or font challenged or just don't know what looks good. That could help you get away from something simple like this, not bad, not horrible, to something like this. Not fancy, but simple to do in Google Slides or PowerPoint and set your presentation apart from the rest. Now, as you start getting comfortable, you can create something more aesthetically pleasing such as this. The red of the font matches the red of the eye of the Terminator. Now, before you get all crazy and try to get all sorts of random images, remember your use of colors, fonts, and layout, all that other stuff is there to help you organize your information and keep your audience's attention. It needs to be relevant to what you are presenting. So here's how I might use all these things about fonts and colors that we just talked about. So for this slide about St. Augustine, I picked a font with Spain's colors for the slide talking about the first Spanish settlement in North America. I utilized a text box to put my most essential info in, which I will not just read, but will provide commentary and elaborate on to my audience. And I showed the audience what I wanted them to pay attention to with the use of an arrow on the map. That's where St. Augustine was established and use colors that match the color used on the map to note Spanish territory for my text box as well as my arrow. Now there are so many cool things you can do. You can spend all day on just colors and fonts. And in the description, I will reveal some tips and tricks in another video about using fonts and colors in more creative ways. My last tip is you need to get creative. There's all sorts of apps that will allow you to do really cool creative things. Keep in mind though, no matter how cool and creative your presentation is, you still gotta know your stuff. But once you know your stuff, how are you gonna present it in a engaging, creative way to your audience? And so you really wanna get creative. Now in the education space, there's this term called app smashing. It's where you basically create some content with one app or one program, you then export it. So let's just say I edit a photo, I do something with the photo where I remove an element of that photo. So let's go back to our painting of, you know, a Native American hunting a bison on the Great Plains. Maybe I would take an app or use an app, extract the image, ask the audience what they see happening here. And then if I had more time, this is a super bootleg. I edit out the horse to, to get the audience to really think about how the horse would have an impact, both good and bad, on indigenous people. You know, another example of trying to be creative, maybe you have an image of Theodore Roosevelt and you want to kind of hammer home that famous quote, I took the canal zone. So you have a video of him kind of pretending to say the quote as you show a map of what that canal will do in terms of shipping times between New York and San Francisco. So, you know, just thinking about how you can use one app, whether it be to edit, another app to add a font, you know, create video, do different special effects. The point of this is be creative, tell a story, and make PowerPoint that is not boring, that Dwight would wanna sit through. 
Stay tuned for more videos showing you some tips and tricks on how to make your presentations better. Until next time, if the video helped you, click like, leave a comment, and have a beautiful day. Peace.